Algebra 2. Here we go, guys. Uh, let's jump into it. We are in Section 8 today. Chapter 6, Section 8, Transforming Polynomial Functions. As the note says, we've done this so many times before, and as I've said before, we're going to keep doing this pretty frequently. It's one of the big, important topics that goes through Algebra 2. All right, so you've seen this. Uh, you may have this chart nearly memorized by now. If you do, um, kudos to you. Well done. Um, if not, there it is. All right, there's the transformation chart right there in front of you. Um, there are some things that are a little bit different, of course, because we're using polynomials. Uh, it requires a little bit more work when you're simplifying because we're dealing with all those exponents and uh, kind of expanding something out and then simplifying it down as you've been doing throughout this whole chapter. All right, so we uh, are finishing out the chapter actually with this section. So uh, you made it through another chapter. Good job, guys. Keep working hard. Um, all right, so you see that chart? Copy that chart. You're going to need it. You're going to want it for your test unless you want to memorize it. All right, so you can pause the video, take the time to copy that down. You're going to need it throughout the homework. We're going to use it throughout the notes. All right, here we go. Next one. Here's an example problem that just shows you what it looks like to expand something when you're using the chart. All right, so they want a uh, vertical stretch by a factor of two. And you can see for a vertical stretch, you put the, uh, the coefficient out in front of the entire expression, and then you are going to have to distribute it through. However, you're gonna see that they also want you to do this little part here. That shift three units left piece is actually the hard part, all right? So you gotta put the shift three units left inside the parentheses, but you remember anything that goes inside the parentheses, and we're talking shifting left or right, that's for the x axis, you do the opposite. So look at that right there, x plus three, but it said shift three units left. But again, the opposite, x plus three. Then what you have to pay attention to is this part right here will have to be expanded out. Then after you expand it out, I'll zoom in. All right, so again, this part right here is gonna be expanded out. You have to take x plus 3, that whole expression, and bring it to the third power. So expand it out. Then distribute a 3 into the new polynomial. Then add 6 to it at the end of that. Then you're going to have another new polynomial that you're going to have to distribute that 2 into. All right, so all of that being said... I'm going to show you a pre-worked out example problem that I'll guide you through, and it's going to show you all the steps to that. Okay, so here we go. Let's jump into our example problems for section eight. Let's finish this thing out. Okay, so what you're given is the function x cubed plus four. All right, that's the original f of x function. Now we need to write the rule for each of these new g of x functions. So the first one here, number one, g of x equals f of x minus five. All right, so what we are dealing with is f of x is this expression right here. This is f of x. So anywhere you see f of x, we got to substitute that in. Okay, so f of x, we are now going to write x cubed plus four. And then right here, then they say, okay, subtract five. All right, so now minus five. Simple enough. That's how we start, little intro. X to the power of three minus one. So that's the first one that we're looking at here. Okay, so next one that we move on to, a little bit different. We have the same f of x, uh, x cubed plus four. But now you'll notice we are looking inside the parentheses. So it says x plus 2. That is the expression. <laughs> what I want to make the connection with this is this guy right here. Okay, so they're saying basically everywhere you see x, you have to plug this in. So we're going to plug it in right here for that x. But now you got to bring it to the power of 3. Okay, so let's write that out. 
we have x plus 2, then to the power of 3, then plus 4. Okay, that expression, we're going to have to expand that all out. All right, so that means you have x plus 2, x plus 2, x plus 2. All right, that whole expression right there, we're going to have to take care of all of that, and then we get to add 4 at the end. Okay, so let's take the time to do that, and then I'm going to go ahead and show you what your answer would work out to be. Okay, so let's go ahead and write that down. It's going to expand out to be, we'll zoom in a little bit, x to the third plus 6x squared plus 12x plus 8. And then don't forget we have that plus 4 right at the end there. So all of that is then going to, we know the 8 plus 4. I'm going to go ahead and update that. That's just going to give us 12. Okay, so that, my friends, is the answer to this guy right here where they wanted to have a shift. It looks like 2 to the left, but you can see the original function actually had that to the third power, so we got to expand it out. And then don't forget to do that plus 4 at the end there. Okay, so next thing, let's go ahead, move down the page. All right. Okay, so we have a brand new f of x function here, x cubed minus 2x squared minus x plus 2. And we need to write the new function for g of x. And the first thing it says here is just reflect f of x across the x-axis. So if you look at your chart, you can uh, take a look at the notes, pause the video, go back, take a look in the textbook, either way. So basically what we're looking at here is when you reflect it across the x-axis, that's going to be something that affects the entire f of x, okay? So basically what that's going to do is a negative sign in front of the entire expression, okay? So what does that mean for us? That means in parentheses, we're going to have this entire expression. And then you're going to have to distribute a negative sign throughout the whole thing and then rewrite it, okay? So that's just going to give us a negative x cubed plus 2x squared plus x minus 2. There we go. Okay, so that covers that simply just for a reflection across the x-axis. All right, let's move on down here. All right, these guys, um, these guys are actually a lot easier than you know, the previous few problems here. So we're given this function, 16x to the fourth minus 24x squared plus four. There we go. All right, so I'm just reading this guy off right here to you. We just need to describe g as a transformation of f. Just describe it so you don't actually have to expand it out. You don't have to write the equation down. We just have to say what is happening here if you are given now, okay, g of x, they want one-fourth placed in front of f of x. Just describe what happens to g here. All that is, look at the chart, look back at what that would be. This would be a vertical compression. That's all we have to say. This is a vertical compression. If you want to be more specific, a vertical compression by a factor of one-fourth. Simple enough, 
Okay. Now let's take a look at the next one, number five, same style, but now you're going to notice that we have a fraction within the parentheses of X. So this is going to be a little bit different. Again, take a look at the chart, go back in the video. This is simply going to be a horizontal stretch. Okay, if you take a look back at the chart, the horizontal part, you remember it's a little bit different. So in the chart, you see that it's F and then you have one over B times X. So this was that flip one. So if, again, we're more specific here. It's a horizontal stretch factor of two. Okay, so we're going to work it out. It actually works out. We flip it around. Okay, so there we go. And here comes the fun one that I've already pre-done for you to work it out. So write a function that transforms. This is our given function, 8x cubed minus 2. That's the given function. Now here's what they want us to do to it. Compress vertically factor of one half. All right, compressing vertically means that the one half is going to be out in front of the whole expression. Then move the x-intercept. So that is a horizontal movement. Three units right. You guys remember, horizontal movement, you do the opposite in the parentheses. So it says three to the right, but we're actually going to do this. Notice x minus three. But we got to put it inside the parentheses because that's what you do for horizontal. And then I'm going to show you this full thing. Follow with me here. Just this part here, expand it out. So I showed you x minus 3, that whole expression to the third power, means you have three of these guys. And then when you expand that out, this is what it works out to be right here. Okay? So I took x minus 3, did that binomial three times, and it works out to be this guy right here. Then I had to take this expression, and now I have to multiply it by 8. So that means distribute 8 into the whole expression. And we can kind of zoom in a little bit. And then what we're looking at, this entire thing, distribute the 8, makes this right here. I wanted to make sure you saw that was in the same color. But you'll notice I have this minus 2 in blue right here. Where did that come from? That came from here. That's this minus 2 right there. So now we have to incorporate that at the end. So that negative 216 minus 2 is what gives us that negative 218. Then the final piece, because everybody should remember from Algebra 1, when you are uh, order of operations, right? You start inside and work your way out and then follow order of operations along the way. So exponents go first, then multiplication, then the subtraction, and now we work our way all the way out. So the last final step is actually incorporating that one half. So there we go. We incorporate the one half when we get to this phase right here. And then this is our final answer right here is the final answer. That's the solution. And we can kind of zoom back out. All right, so a vertical compression. There's the original. Vertical compression and work your way all the way down. Then you can kind of follow with me, hopefully, all those steps. All right, take the time to watch these videos, guys. Write all these steps down into your notes. That way you have a full, thorough example of exactly how to do it. All right, there you go, guys. Um, Keep working hard. Good luck to you. I know you can do it. And we'll see you in the next one.